Joining me right now, Martin O'Malley, former Maryland governor and Democratic presidential candidate during this past election. It's awfully nice to see you again, Governor. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Alex. My pleasure. So uh, your reaction, sir, to the criticism that the president got during his first visit to Texas, may, may Texas rather, mainly because he didn't meet with flood victims. Are you at least willing to give the president credit for going back today and for behaving in the manner that we've been watching live unfold the last 30, 45 minutes? Well, I believe that, that all human beings are capable of redemption and change, and, and let's hope that on take two here, the president's able to show that sort of presidential leadership of not only empathy, not only caring, but also being able to deliver what people expect by way of rescue and relief and, and also recovery. This is going to be a very long haul, and the starting point for that for any leader is to be present, to be with to be among his people and also ideally to reflect the goodness within and we've seen a lot of goodness in Houston it's not the sort of politics of division and fear that the president's an unabashed practitioner of you know wanting to lock up DACA kids or 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 turn us against each other and I think uh, hopefully on this trip he'll reflect that goodness that we've seen in so many stories of human compassion in Houston. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you about DACA in just a moment sir but I want to have our director put up a tweet that the president uh, put out there we know he loves to use Twitter to uh, send out his thoughts um, or actually, you know what, Governor, I'm hearing that the president is going to say a few words. Let's take a listen here, see if we can catch that. The way everything's going. A lot of love. There's a lot of love. What did the family tell you earlier? They were just right. happy. We saw a lot of happiness. It's been really nice. It's been a, it's been a wonderful thing. It's as, tr as tough as this was, it's been a wonderful thing. I think even for the country to watch and for the world to watch. It's been beautiful. Have a good time, everybody. I'm going to be doing a little help over here. Say? They're really happy with what's going on. It's been something, it's been very well received. Even by you guys, it's been well received. Did you look out the window at all at the plane came and came through? Did you happen to see any flooding? No, I didn't see. You mean the flooding? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was, there's a lot of water, but it's, it's leaving pretty quick, pretty quickly. But there's a lot of water, a lot of water, but it's moving out. But I think most importantly, the governor, the relationship with the governor and the mayor and everybody, it's been fantastic. And with and with the federal government, it's been really good. And we're signing a lot of documents now to get money into your What documents? Uh, 7.9 billion. Uh, we signed it, and uh, now it's going through a very quick, hopefully quick process. How are they what? How are those kids doing that you were talking about? I think they're doing great. They're doing really good things. All right, Governor, thank you for staying with us as we caught a bit of uh, sure. just an impromptu there of what the president was saying to the media. And he's saying that the folks he saw there showed a lot of love, saw some happiness, that people are doing really great, uh, and made that point, I think, most notably for all of those inside of the NRG stadium there, that he has signed a relief effort bill for $7.9 billion, which he hopes Congress takes under their belt. And uh, approves and distributes very, very quickly. Also noted that they're working very well with local, state, and federal officials. That They're all working in unison on this. Um, with regard to what the president also said via Twitter, I was going to just bring that up, sir. He, he said shortly after landing in Texas, uh, Texas, we are with you today. We are with you tomorrow. We will be with you every single day after to restore, recover, and rebuild. People are going to hold to that promise, aren't they? Well, and, and they absolutely need to. I mean, one of the things that I heard the, the president say in that brief little video clip was he used the past tense. He said this was a traumatic event. No, this is an unfolding traumatic event. This is going to go on for a long time. And perhaps that's his inexperience in wanting to put this in the rearview mirror. This uh -huh. recovery effort, as in any storm, whether it was Hurricane Sandy or, or emergencies that I responded to as governor, uh, the suffering that people are be going to be going through is going to be something oh. that's going to take weeks and weeks and months. months. And uh, we need to be able to have I mean, one of the good things about years. this unfolding so far so, is that we've seen a tremendous amount of muscle memory, if you will, in a FEMA, mm -hmm. a public institution, public entity that's much better equipped to respond to these things. What I didn't see in that video so far is the is the mayor. Perhaps it was an invite-only uh, uh, no, uh, photo op there, I do, but it's really I, the first responders that are going to be under yeah. a tremendous amount of pressure governor, in the weeks and months ahead. I will ahead. tell you that the, the Houston mayor, uh, as well as Texas governor, 
there have both been in stride with uh, the president, certainly. Let's take a listen to the president. He's uh, talking with a few folks there. Security keeping him at bay to some degree, but it looks like he's reaching out. Some of you had your seatbelts on there as that camera was readjusting. Woo! A little bit of a, a head spin. Uh, but Governor O'Malley, as you, you can listen to folks, they're happy to see the president as he hands out food there. Granted, it's 1241 Houston time, so it certainly is lunchtime. A lot of people taking selfies. I must say I had to laugh when that one gentleman was like, wait, I've got to figure out how to work my camera. I'm like, oh, that's so me. <laughs> you were all kind of that way. But that said, um, let's talk about the money. Uh, the White House, as you know, asking for nearly $8 billion. President is making uh, it clear that he has already signed that legislation. He hopes it gets passed, certainly. Um, there are concerns that not all the money goes exactly where it is intended. Uh, I've had legislators on earlier who said you just cannot guarantee that. Do you see any way to do that when you combine federal, state, and local authorities to try to say this is the money we have apportioned for Hurricane Harvey relief? It is all going to get to where it's intended to go. Well, yes. I mean, look, we have never had better tools to be able to to map and to see and make visible 
uh, these sorts of efforts that, that let's be honest with one another it requires a tremendous amount of coordination cooperation and communication across local state and federal government but there's another uh, aspect at play here and that is the expectations of the real people who are hungry for real relief and the expectations of, of, of what their insurance may pay out, what the federal and state government might be able to do to help them versus what's actually being appropriated, you know, there's a big gap between the two. Uh, so uh, look, uh, I, if, if I were providing any advice for our, our folks in Washington right now, it would be to make not only a very adequate appropriation now, but to better fund FEMA's ability to respond even before emergencies. Look, you can't rush back and all of a sudden say, whoops, for about a year or two, we've been cutting Homeland Security grants to cities. We've been cutting the ability of FEMA and others to respond. And then all of a sudden, a hurricane hits and you've got to fill it up. We're smarter than that. We're better than that as a people. And we need to make the appropriations necessary in the realization that because of climate change, we're going to be seeing a lot of 800-year floods. I mean, this was the biggest rain event in the United States history. And yeah. it's not going to be the last. Uh, and we need to have a government that actually works, that's functions, that's robust, and can respond and provide the relief that people need, not only to, uh, to rescue them, but also to recover. And it's my hope that we are learning from our experience as a country, and we'll get better as we move forward here. And, and Houston's one big test for us, whether or not we're all in this together. I believe we are. And hopefully uh, that's the course that we're, we're seeing unfold in Houston's law long recovery ahead of us. And this may be one step towards getting everybody to understand the uh, concept of climate change and get everybody on the same page in terms of accepting that as a reality. Uh, may I ask you, sir, about the president's delay on DACA after the calls from Republican leaders like House Speaker Ryan and also tech leaders, they want to keep this program in place. As governor, sir, I know that you signed a law which would make illegal immigrants brought to the United States as children eligible for in-state college tuition. What do you think is going to happen between now and Tuesday that will shape this president's decision on where he goes with DACA? Yes, not only did we do that here in Maryland in the legislature, but then the people of our state approved it by, uh, by 58 percent of the vote in a referendum. Uh, I believe that one of, the, one of the most important values you see unfolding in Houston is the belief that we share that we're all in this together. These DACA kids, these DREAM Act kids, kids covered by DACA, these DREAM Act kids have known no other country but our country, the United States of America. It's uh, uh, d jarringly uh, uh, incongruous, uh, in conflict, for the president to be considering criminalizing these children. I don't believe there's any six-year-old capable of committing a crime, criminalizing these children at the same time that he's trying to assure the people of Houston that we're all in this together. I mean, in Houston, there's about a half million undocumented neighbors who are helping one another uh, with everyone else in Houston bail out of this flood and this storm. Uh, this is a moment I think the president could actually make a very, very positive statement mm -hmm. and say that these Act kids are deserving not only of, of legal protection, but they are deserving of the dignity that we as Americans believe is inherent and, in every child. And Governor, I will say that I have a dreamer who's I'm, with whom I'm about to speak, but I would be remiss if I didn't quickly ask you before we let you go, sir, about the rumors that you are considering a 2020 run for the presidency. Care to comment on that? Sure, I just might. What I'm focused on right now is doing the next good thing we can do in the political life of our country, which uh, means for my part, I'm traveling all over the country, helping good people run for office at the state and local level. Later on today, I'll be with Dante Tanner, who's running in a uh, delegate seat in Herndon, Virginia. I'll be going to New Jersey for Phil Murphy, who's running for governor. The beauty of our country is that we have the ability to correct our mistakes, and the next opportunity to do that is in these midterm elections that are coming up all over the country where 36 governors are up. All right, uh, former Maryland governor, Democratic presidential candidate during this past election, and maybe in this next one, Martin O'Malley. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.